on the BDFK, okay, which may or may not be useful depending on what you look like, that is exploded. Um, the reason that some of them will be obsessed about matching the points is that the guidance has evolved over the six months that this program has been going on. Initially, they weren't telling us how much, how much match funding we had to put forward. Now they're saying you've got to put the same amount as, uh, as we're, yeah, exactly, as we're putting forward. And the other problem that we're going to have is that their funding <coughs> assumes 90% coverage. So we're still, across the entire country, still going to have this issue of what the deal with the final 10%. And the other thing that you mentioned about the local authorities are concerned about how they've actually allocated the funding. If they contact BD UK, they can enter into a non-disclosure agreement and get the information based on how things have been calculated. But mind you, once they get it, if it A makes any sense when they're trying to go through the information and B makes any logical sense about community infrastructure and what needs to be connected where, good luck to them. About it. <laughs> There's another major problem with Ofcom in a lot of their statistics that they're very much bent around the BT model. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're all ex you, BT. You will Income. see seventy figures like seventy or eighty percent is already covered, which is actually nonsense. Yeah. Um, I've worked out with a colleague down in Surrey that we're closer to forty four percent, and yet Mr. Surrey County Council has said by. 2014, he's going to have a hundred percent coverage of the entire Surrey <laughs> County. I mean, they're oh, well, that's because a hundred percent of people will be connected to an exchange, which is FTTC enabled, and that's what the county is connected. Well, and, and it isn't. Well, no. it won't be FTTC well, enabled because there's lots of small places like our Hornby Exchange will never be FTCC enabled. No. They'll say the same as, as they said in 2003, that the whole of the country, 99.6% of the country, has got broadband. And they stood firm by that until all this funding came. And then they said, well, actually, a third hasn't got it, which is what we've been saying since 2003. But that they, they'll do exactly the same once they get all this money. And any county council is going to give the money to BT because they're promising 90%. And, and the vote, the, if they can get 90% of the people happy, then that's what a county council has to do, isn't it? It makes sense. They've got voters and they'll be leaving in a few years. And, you know, that's what makes economic sense is to help 90% of the people, not 10%. But what we can't get through to them is if they would just help that 10% and get some rural fibre networks going, those fibre networks would get competition going and up the ante for the other 90% and then everybody's happy. They won't take the risk. I can't say as a blame, but if I was a county councillor, probably I wouldn't. But I'm not, so All we're doing good actually. All public are risk averse. Pardon? All public of course they are, they're supposed to be. You know, it yeah. depends what type of risk, because you're talking about financial. If we look at it from a reputational point of view, we will be hammered. From that ten percent who don't have broadband, who, who already don't have broadband. You actually, you actually won't, because BT is going to take your funding, match it for you, so that worry is less for you, and they will get super fast broadband to ninety percent of your people. But you've still got the other ten percent. They will, yes, but they will get. Save. They will get two meg, like like James is doing, and with two meg for somebody who's on dial-up, they'll think it's wonderful. For a few years, by which time most of your councillors will have retired and they won't give a monkeys that it's ten percent is gonna come back at them and again it's and again. Work like that. It's not gonna work like that because that ten percent is it's already gonna happen. come across, not in our area. It's that ten percent's already knocking on our door and now going, Where's our broadband? Yeah, but what are you gonna do about it? BT will do it. BT will do the they'll USC, they'll give them satellites, subsidised satellites or bet which is bonded copper pairs with special equipment that costs £1,300 to get two meg to that house. And if they can't do that, they'll put satellites, that's what James is doing, and, or they'll put satellites up. Or they'll go to the exchange and turn them off. Donny, how far did you get on copper wire in Minnesota? Just with DSL, DSL. yeah. Uh, 57,000 feet. In normal numbers? Five miles, five uh, kilometres. Uh, two miles. About eight miles. No, no, no. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Oh, 1,600. Oh, How many feet? 19,000 yards. 19,000 meters. That's about 15 miles. Yeah, 10 miles. And then what did you get over that copper, over that 15 miles? On a single pair, we can get up to a meg on that. A meg? 
being bidirectional. And if it was, say, so it was five, five miles? Pardon me? If it was, say, it was five miles? <coughs> um, between a maid and two maids at five miles. And that's and the very bit. Is that how much are you firing down? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? How much are you firing down and how much does the equipment cost that fires it down? Uh, $69. All oh, right. Is, it, is that SPSL? Pardon me? SPSL or XPSL? No, it's a, it's a, it's a form of ADSL. ADSL. But it's... Enhanced. But it's... Um, but we're, we're going to know where that is. It's but over here in the UK, we're not, you won't get anywhere near those sort of figures. I mean, you could yes, have the just get the rate. Well, our copper is rubbish too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, our copper, the, the Bell Company mm -hmm. can get all of about 12,000 people, you can do 50,000. Right. Right. So it's, it's, it's the type of equipment to use. Fish. And I mean, yeah, this is. But the answer, of course, is that BT are not are using the wrong type of equipment. They're not using yeah, it. Yeah, equipment dated and it has been for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, I've been in the exchanges doing all the trimming for them, trying to speed it up for you, and it's it's not there. The kit falls down. Okay. And, and copper isn't the right way to do it, no matter no. what. I mean, you have way no. too many issues with uh, with uh, temperature changes and water, yeah. and and, it, and you're just mm. not going to get a long term solution. Mm. But getting it out there quicker is better than not getting out there at all, which is why we tied into their networks to. Get it out there on the copper, and we can run two maids as far as we want to. Um, but basically, what we're running is an E1 out to each place, and that equipment is a couple hundred dollars per per customer. This, yeah. this is a local one. Yeah, this is this is how you're going to share your ducts and pipes. <laughs> the BT ten box. Yes, it sure is. And, and, that, and that is live. And this is actually here's the file to the cabinet. This is the original. This is the original cabinet with all the twisted wires in it. It's, uh, it's quite, it's quite, quite an eye opener. If you, I'd better give you pictures. I think. Before I go on. I think one of the big problems is getting, you know, at grassroots level and professionally as well, this is why the partnership is so important. There is a load of information about why, for instance, fibre to the cabinet is a non-runner in areas like this. Getting that information through to the people who make the decisions appears to be bordering on impossible. It, I can't understand why BT will not share the information about their cabinets with it. I mean, it's not like they're... It's not them, it's the Chinese. No, they're it's in terms of where they are. It's a kit in them. For a while, we don't want to share that information. Live they would be said as part of the deal, they wouldn't share it. Live Garfield, oh, let's slip well, well, a meeting in public with journalists yeah. present. But they will not be visited by the And when we're going to get hold of pictures of cabinets, there is... They actually do things to cabinets to prevent any way of upgrading them to fibre to the home, like filling in... The, well, of course, if the, the, the local the engineer opens the company, to make. But Liv Garfield actually said in a public statement that um, the range of the cabinets used to be down to 15 meg, but they're going to extend the range of the cabinets to, to, to 5 meg. So the people in the donut around the cabinet, at the edges, they're going to be getting 5 meg for infinity because they're never going to get fibre. But we are in the rural areas. And then we'll start to harvest those customers. If we build be, our fibre yeah, networks now. Pay, they pay infinity rates for five meg. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Forty-two pounds. They're going to pay a month for infinity. Five meg. Yeah. 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 And they're more expensive, but you'll yeah. have that expectation that it's going to be. And that's another thing, yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's on Twitter, just every day tweet. It is not fibre optic unless it's fibre to the home. Just tweet it. I would like to say the ASA sent me a letter this week saying that they have judged against Virgin Media for claiming that there's this fibre optic broadband, but that's taken us what? Two years to get it through to them. You cannot say it's fibre optic broadband if it's coming over a coax. And you've got a letter. Yeah, it's about that thick. I haven't bothered reading it. Just saying, we've <laughs> jumped on BT. Yeah. Well, they haven't started on BT. 
Well, virgin's well, closer. It, but virgin's it. better than BT. No, no, at least the, it's coax. The argument was that, that originally the ASA said there is fibre in the network, and I said, well, anyone can say there's fibre somewhere yeah. in the network. Yeah. Mine's fibre. My exchange has fibre in. Yeah. Of course it does. Where do you find all the On their own websites. There's lots of there's lots so of you link wind farms. We're all linked together. The uh, wind farms, they're all doing the CIS thing as well, because they're risky. You know, you know invest in that. I was I was invisible until he exposed me. The case has not come to court yet, Chris. <laughs>